Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks, episode 170. My name's Chris Britton. I'm your host, and let's go. All right, welcome back again. Uh, like I said, my name is Chris Britton. I'm your host. In my cyber studio today with me is my sexy ranch hand, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. <laughs> Do you say that when you're on the ranch? No. no, I don't. That's a stereotype. You need to start doing that. You need to own that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, but we also have two other uh, guests. Some might say that they're actually celebrities a little bit in the Hero Clicks world. Um, we have Jason and Amber from Married with Clicks. Welcome, guys. Hey, great to be on the show. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, you guys had to drive exactly zero miles to get here since we're over Skype, so I'm glad, you're, glad you made it. I'm glad you made Power it. Power of the internet. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over a quick interview. We're going to play a lot of games tonight, uh, segments galore. There's not there's not a lot of news that WizKids has put out recently uh, since the sets have dropped, so we're just going to have some fun tonight. Um, Calder, are you ready to start asking questions? Questions? Questions. Yes, absolutely. All right. You want to start us off? Yeah. Um, so my first question for Amber and Jason is how long have you guys been making videos? Um, so <laughs> we actually just checked in on this because we kind of forgot. Uh, one of our first videos was an unboxing for... Uh, Wolverine and the X-Men, which came out four years ago. So we've actually been mostly consistently uh, bringing out videos uh, for the last four years. Four years. Wow. So long. <laughs> <laughs> it all, it, it's, it's very long. <laughs> it, all, it all started because I, I was bored because I was out of work at the time. and I, was I like, had just had babies. <laughs> I watched a lot of Rooster Teeth, and I was still in school. So I was like, hey, we yell at each other and play this game a lot. Let's do what they do and make videos of it. Okay, I've got to ask, who got who into the game? Uh, neither. We, we met, met each other. We met through the game. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. actually really, that's wow. kind of one of you getting the other one into it. That's really cool. So, yeah, all right. But I assume that your guys' making videos over the years has drastically changed. You've learned a lot of things, screwed up a bunch of things, I'm assuming, right? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the biggest things was actually about, oh, my God, are we going on two years? No, a year and a half of our Patreon? Uh, we're, we're on the second year of our Patreon. We're on the second year of our Patreon. Uh, through doing our Patreon support, we were able to actually update our editing software, and that made a huge difference in how our videos are made, how they're edited, the quality of them just skyrocketed, going from just, like, the free editor that comes with Windows to doing an actual editing suite. Well, yeah, that and we've had our failure shows, too. What was that one I did where I was always wearing a different toque? Prob that thought. Prob that thought. It was that was, that was my way of uh, attempting to bring news and whatnot to the ear. It was the world. predecessor to Metafix. It was the predecessor to Metafix. It just, I needed company is all it was. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you just start making videos out of boredom? Is that what happened? You're like, yeah. yes. Literally, that's what happened. <laughs> um, we are, are, this started around the time our twins were born. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever had children, or if you have children, you know that infants are incredibly boring creatures, but you have to be up at late hours of the night in order to keep an eye on them. They're very high maintenance, but they don't do anything. Yeah. So, like, you can't go anywhere or do a whole lot with them because you're always on demand. So what was it, but... like, 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're like, oh, man, I'm bored. I better just shoot a video real quick. Yep. yep. <laughs> we, we play a game of Hero Flix, and we put a wow. camera in front of it. Why not? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so you uh, mentioned briefly uh, Metafix. That's one of the video s segments. You guys call them segments that you do? We call them shows, segments. Shows, segments, yeah. It, it depends. What do you – like, we actually don't give them a name. We just kind of do them. Uh, each one has its own little story behind it because the whole, the whole channel itself started with just us playing games. Yeah. And then uh, news started coming out in Heroclix, but – uh, like, there wasn't much video content when we started. I think, uh, was it? Uh, um, Glass Cabinet Glass Hobbies? Glass Cabinets was doing it, uh, I think at the time, 
Uh, there were a few other channels, but they're not around anymore. Yeah. Um, and then, like, once we started getting on the scene, a lot more people were opening up. A, like, there was a lot of podcasts. A lot of podcasts, but not a lot of video. And then it kind of just, like, the Heroclix video scene just exploded. And now it seems like everyone's doing unboxings. Everyone's doing their own sort of things. And the channels that are really succeeding are the ones that do something different. Yeah. And when we first started with the games, the games are great, but they're they're time consuming and different types of times in our lives have uh, have affected how frequently we can do them. But we also wanted to keep content coming out, so we started. We probably I thought was the precursor to just about every single talking head. We like to call them talking head shows, where we just kind of stare at the camera and uh, talk to the viewer. So uh, at one point, I had played a game with Amber on the. It was one of the games we played on our videos. And I had just absolutely just demolished Amber, um, like to the point where I, I I felt bad after the game was over, and then the comments reminded me how bad I should feel. Uh, so I, I kind of had to curb my competitive edge because by this point we'd we'd gotten back into the game, but very casually, and then all of a sudden the competitive Jason started showing up again. Uh, so I had to take that aside and just talk at the camera about competitive things. Um, because, you know, I like competing. I like playing hard every so often. So that was the, the birth of my fix, as it were, of the meta game, and hence was born Meta Fix. Um, Amber, for the longest time, has been uh, a judge, aspiring judge, been really good at figuring out rules and learning rules, uh, especially when she's not playing, she's really good with the rules, and decided to start sharing. We started to build a show where Amber kind of takes those intricacies of the rules that a lot of players don't know, and uh, help you to dial up your game, as it were, and she that's where Dial It Up was born. And then the Metal the metal Lab itself was born of... Uh, it started as what I call Champ Chat now. Uh, originally, we were taking Heroclix Champs, uh, putting on a show, and then I'd bring a couple friends on, and we'd, we, we, quote unquote, would interview them. But it ended up being me interviewing the guy, uh, whoever, whatever, whoever we had on the show, and these guys who do know a little bit about Hero Clicks with different minds in the game of Hero Clicks, not contributing enough. So I stopped inviting uh, high level players and just started getting the opinions of these guys and just kind of guided the conversation to a certain degree. And uh, hence was born the Meta Lab. And, you know, once I started getting back into more work and more consistent work and work, I, now I'm in a job that I really give a crap about and almost live in. Uh, the games have actually been the show that. Uh, we don't do it frequently, yeah. so um, that that's kind of the evolution of the channel. We do try to play games every so often, especially when there's notable changes or things that need to be shown on camera or need to be played. Uh, so, like, when the first iteration of the new rules showed up, we tried a couple games on what they had shown with the power changes. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we, we, we do a lot more talking heads than we do of uh, our games, for sure. Which uh, may or may not change... Uh coming up as we we did actually just recently add a new show or segment uh to our channel where we are teaching our eldest daughter how to play the game yeah I saw uh, that. so there there is a game right now uh that will be released i believe tomorrow to the public uh as we do release to our patrons first um so we'll be released tomorrow of a, just a very very basic game all we do is move around the map and attack each other um, and go over just very, very simple rules of the games. And as these games take place, I'll be adding more and more rules to it uh, as sort of a teaching tool for other people, but also a way to get her interested in uh, playing the game and, excuse me, learning the game as well. With both parents being very heavily into HeroClix, I suspect she didn't have a chance. <laughs> we like to think she didn't have a chance, and she kind of got excited about it organically herself, too. She saw our stuff. She would ask for, you know, mostly girl figures here and there. Um, but when we had extras, we'd be like, yeah, yeah, you can take that one. That's okay. And uh, she kind of organically – she's got a collection that's comparable to some of my friends' collections. Yeah. I know because everybody borrows from me, so there's no way they've got a collection bigger than my daughter's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we wanted to teach her. Uh, it's it's come to the point where she's also really invested in YouTube and YouTubers and that whole culture, and she wants to be a part of it. 
Um, so this is kind of our way of letting her be a part of it, but also having that strict parental control over it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Calder, what's your next question? My next question. Thank you for asking, Chris. What are your guys' favorite pieces in the game? Amber? <laughs> yeah, of course you defer to me as soon as I just took a, a well, drink. I took the lead on the last one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really bad at being like, yeah, this is my most favorite of all time things. Uh, I would say the thing that I have played the most would be the Brainiac Skull Ship. Yep. I love the crap out of that thing. I know how to play it forwards and backwards. I've played it forever. Well, like the last two years that it, two, three years it's been Which out. One? Um, the con exclusive oh. one, not the retail one. No. So the original you purple hate the one. retail one? <laughs> I've personally actually never played the retail one. We own it. Jason's played it. I've never played it. You beat the crap out of me on camera with it. Yeah, I did. We, <laughs> we have, did, we did we a, a skull ship versus off. skull ship battle. <laughs> I've never even gotten to play against it. And I, I'm much more a Marvel guy than a DC guy, but I love playing against DC Hero Clicks. Just playing Hero Clicks in general, but I've always wanted to play against that and never had the opportunity. No one has it that I know that plays, I guess. Really? Yeah. It is. No, it's, a fun, it's really fun to play against, actually. I, I often forget how how lucky we've been with how many of those things have crossed our path. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, huh. it, it came out one of, I believe, the second year that we got Canadian Nationals up here, and they sent out, like, a, a huge, huge uh, thing of a prize support for it to the point where our entire market up here in Ontario was just flooded with them. Like, everybody had one. So everybody could purchase one, and then they were handed out as prizes. And then for the next, like, three three years, they were handed out as prizes because they were still around. And then WKOs gave them out as prizes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the WKO in Whitby, Ontario, we helped a lot of their advertising, a lot of their stuff. So then they gave us one as well. And it's, it's, same with the Cree Supreme Intelligence. And I kicked myself for how many Cree Supreme Intelligence we've gotten You've given rid of away, yeah. Because recently it came up to like a hundred bucks or whatnot. So yeah. Hey, all uh, I'm saying is if you want to throw me one, I'm I'm not gonna <laughs> say no. That's the <laughs> once we've come to realize how many of these things have crossed our paths, they stop crossing our paths. Yeah, they're not around anymore. <laughs> yeah. They were flooded and then now they're all gone. Like, gotcha. we, 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 yeah, we don't seem to get it as blessed with con exclusives as we have in the past couple of years. So does that mean that that's your favorite? Is the Supreme Intelligence, Jason? <laughs> That's definitely Amber's favorite. The uh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not big on those. I, I've always loved every iterate, uh, the most recent iterations of the Question, uh, the one that came with the Trinity Sin base and the one that came in the Flash set. I've really liked the Question. Those two versions of the Question, they kind of feel like that little brawling detective-y type dude mm -hmm. who's kind of tricksy and able to get around and whatnot. Um, so I, and now you wouldn't know if because. I am a very I, I do play in a lot of competitive tournaments. Like if you go to Worlds, you go to Canadian Nationals, you'll see my name show up every so often. Uh, I do play in these things in WKS, etc. But so he wouldn't show up on my team. But when I every time I got a chance to build a detective theme team or a mystical theme team, you can count on the question being there. So yeah, the question was definitely one of my favorites uh, in more recent times. Calder, what's the the second part to that question? Second part, actually, really quick, I want to ask. What is your favorite version of Wolverine? Because I know, I'm pretty sure, at least I know, that you own <laughs> all of them, if not most of them. I do actually own every single iteration of Wolverine that has come out since the game uh, launched in uh, 2002, including a few of the Purple Ring promotion guys. Nice. And at a, this point in time, my favorite iteration of Wolverine is the Wolverine Colonel Logan. He's not called Colonel Logan, but Colonel Logan from the Days of Future Past. Gravity Feed Box is still my favorite Wolverine, and I think he's perfectly thematical for what he is. He does everything that a Wolverine should do, uh, but he costs too many points, which is the only reason why I haven't played him as much as I would love to play him, because he is more like 75% of your uh, point total when it comes down to it. You have had some pretty good teams with him, and I have been frustrated by him at times, yeah. I'm not going to lie. He's just a fantastic, absolutely fantastic piece. Speaking of your Wolverine collection, my wallet's on the table. Apologize to him. <laughs> <laughs> I learned my lesson. All right, all right. Um, nice. how, about, how about hated pieces? Hated pieces? Yeah. Well, remember when I said I'm a competitive player? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Guess who I'm tired of seeing across the table now? <laughs> it's it's Jakeem Thunder yeah, right now. Like, it's either the it's either Goblin or Jakeem. So yeah, I'm fine with the Goblin King. For one, I'm a big Green Goblin fan. Uh, just the versions of the question they've come up with to just kind of surpass everything right now. Uh, but Jakeem Thunder, I'm just so tired and. Like, I'm not a hater, that kind of thing. If you're going to play him, play him. That's cool. Uh, but I just I, – I used him in Worlds myself, so I'm guilty of it. He spent he spent a lot of time so far as a very dominant piece. Uh, and I've had to learn so many different tricks and whatnot to get around him at this point. I'm just – I'm very tired of seeing him. Uh, and it's it, it's not against the character. It's not against the thing. It's just boredom at this point, I think. Uh, and again, it's that it's that situation. It's not anybody who plays them fall. It's it's just the environment, and I, I have to deal with it. Amber, what about you? Hmm. Zero zero one Iron Man from the Invincible Iron Man. Oh, really? <laughs> I hate what? that Iron Man so much. So when we did the AVX for our our area. Um, and they split, we split between who was Avengers and who was X-Men. We were very, very one-sided. We had about four of us that were X-Men and about 12 or more that were Avengers. I had decided so, the Hulk. Yeah. So, and then we could only build based on our keyword or our, our side. So every single game of every single tournament, I went up against that 001 Iron Man, and he saw through everything. He had a ridiculous range. He had Outwit. He had Psychic Blast. Like, he just, he was the, like, <laughs> pinnacle of Iron Man-ness, and I hated it. Okay, so let me ask you this. It's going off of that, they did change the rules on Ignored's uh, blocking terrain for targeting purposes, and I'm pretty sure that it only destroys one thing as it blows through it now is that good yes it does it actually is only going to do one square at a time which is perfect when you're go trying to go through a barrier or trying to get through a wall and it would have been absolutely fantastic in those times where i'm <laughs> trying to move through the city streets of latveria and i'm not getting shot mm -hmm. from the other side of a five square building <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny I, I i would never have guessed that that iron man would be on someone's top list of hated figures ever. <laughs> Call her just for funsies. What's your most hated figure of all time? Oh, wow. My most hated figure of all time? It's the the con-exclusive Jonah Hex. I can never beat that thing. You're so full of shit. <laughs> no! <laughs> I love, love that guy. Face full of rage and stuff. The shape change he has and then popping out the dock. I've <laughs> never beat that figure any game I've ever played against him. Which one is that? Do you, do you say it was a con exclusive one? Con exclusive, the only good Jonah Hex they've ever made, and That's true. it's the pain of my existence. It's the bane of my existence. It's horrible. Okay, mine is um gonna be Alyosha Craven. I hate. Uh, love him. I hate that figure with a passion. Uh, I I think it's just mostly due to showing up at this one comic shop, and this one guy that I used to play with, he would play with it every week. So it's along the same lines of why Jason hates Jakeem Thunder. Okay, yeah. Boredom, yeah. boredom of seeing him. Yes, in that, and not not only to mention, no one knows who Alyosha Craven is, like, as a character. Like, I'm a huge Marvel fan. I've read <laughs> so many comic books, and even I can't tell you, like, at a point in comic where this was a relevant character. <laughs> and then you have people that are like, they show up, and they're like, oh, I love this. I love Alyosha Craven. I'm like, you don't even know who it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> throw down this figure to play it. Like, and that's it's fine. It's Sergei but... Kravenov's kid. I was gonna say, isn't it the main Craven's kid? Yeah. Yeah, but like, is that it? Is that all? Like the knowledge value? Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's and that's he has a pet like... lion. <laughs> that's the compendium of knowledge that is Alyosha Craven. Yeah. Horrible. That's really character. all you need to know. <laughs> Craven's son know. got a pet lion. <laughs> Calder, uh, you want to hit us with the next question, please? Absolutely. What do you guys think about the current state of the game? <laughs> um, 
It's mass confusion right now. We just came back from our Thor seal because uh, we were a little behind in, in the times at our store, and we had a comic convention recently that was going to take too many people out of the store. So we had to delay it to this week. We'll talk about some mass confusion right now. Some people are confused. Oh, my uh, gosh. So yeah. many people think these new rules actually change things about the game, and we're still trying to figure out what the biggest changes are in these new rules and whatnot. And... I mean, I've played, I think, about five or six games now in the new rule set, and I'm starting to realize that, with the exception of a few minutiae differences, it is basically the same game, <laughs> you know? I think it's one of those things where, with with the mass confusion of it, is beca- it's the... It's not so much that the game has changed, is that the game language has changed. Yeah. So... Um, having a locked value is no longer a thing. So you're no longer, when you're blazing, it's no longer a locked value. Um, but it's an, instead of normal damage, do this. But as soon as people see, oh, it's not locked anymore, that means I can do this, right? And it's like, no, it still works the way same way it did before. It's just the wording is differently. So now it's a lot of people trying to Use adapt wording, to the new yeah. wor- wording and s- seeing which terminology means what it used to mean and which is actually a change. Yeah. Well, there's always going to be those people that anytime there's a rules change, and this goes for any game, there are going to be people that are going to interpret it differently and they're going to try to exploit it to their advantage. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. th- I, I think that is a lot of what is going on right now. But I do agree with you. It does seem to be the same game. But mm-hmm. do, do you guys think this whole rules change was worth it? Or is it yes. just mass confusion? I honestly, for for the for the little bit of time we're gonna have some mass confusion. It's gonna take one or two big tournaments, a couple weeks worth of rules uh, clarifications on the uh, rules forum. It'll all settle out, and I think it's gonna be worth it in the long run for a number of reasons. One specifically is the beginning of the turn, mm-hmm. um, because and I'm guilty of this too. I've had about three quarters of the time of my turn spent being in the beginning of the game with the id cards with sidestepping with everything like that when and it's it this is a mental game is what i'm talking about here it's a mental design if you think you're spending three quarters of your turn in the beginning of the turn you feel like you're going slow and then you speed up the rest of your turn once you get past the fact that beginning of the turn effects are just beginning of the turn effects anything that isn't beginning of the turn effects is now just your turn uh actually kind of starts to level you out a little bit um And I I think that's one of the biggest, most important changes that's going on here is you don't have to pre-plan as much. You can actually plan, act, react to your own problems and whatnot throughout the whole turn. And I think for the entirety of the game and for everybody playing the game, it's a lot better for both new players and old. Um, And in, in, in the long run, the cleanup that was required that's coming of this is the most important part <laughs> um, because there is there, there's been so much in the past that it, it, it kind of started to compound on itself and it's time to kind of step back and go, you know what? Maybe this was stupid. And they, they've really kind of addressed the fact that there are some really silly things going on. It's, and they've kind of dialed it back and made it better in a lot it, 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 for, for the bigger picture, you know? Yeah. And for now, like, a lot of the things that are coming out of that, it will feel like a lot of things got nerfed, and it's really easy to look at it that way, but then if you also look at it from, like, a, like, for me, as a judge's standpoint, a lot of the things that got removed needed to be removed because it made the game way too cumbersome, and there were far too many corner cases where they actually, like, as a judge, you couldn't just look at a card and be like, oh, yeah, no, that's the way it's going to work. You have to look at the card, then look at the pack, then look at the rule book, then look at the errata section, then check to see if anything, any official rulings have been made on it, just to answer a question. Because things have gotten so unbelievably complicated that now reducing a lot of that stuff, um, and this I'm talking about, like, not being able to carry a character while carrying an object. Like, things like that have been brought down because there's too many weird interaction things that can happen on something as simple as that. Yeah. Um, so the simplicity and like the streamlining, the like tightening of everything, I think 
is going to be hard to adjust to right now, but in the long run, like say six to eight to 12 months from now, we're all going to forget what the old game was like. Yeah, and this is also the bonus of having The Rock as an alternative uh, competitive format. The the game of here, WizKids themselves, they run their WKOs, they run their Worlds, they run their Nationals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but they don't run them at reasonable times, uh, and they don't run them often. Uh, with The Rock being a tournament that's running a lot, that gives us more venues, more ideas, more room with, in order to work with these things. And uh, the more and more chance we have to see this in the big picture, see this in the small picture, get our feedback, get our work done with it. It just takes more games played for everybody to understand. And while the rules change itself is to attract new players and help us older players teach new players, sometimes the old players, you, this is where you start to find out who's read the rule book um, in the first place. And it, it's an important element because, you know, a, a lot of the players who throw up their hands and are confused by everything. You know, they didn't take the chance to read the rule book in the first place. They learned from somebody else and trusted them. And then, you know, they're at the same time expecting all of this to kind of still stay the same without reading the nuances to a degree. And they get frustrated and that's understandable, but I, I insist upon everybody that's listening. Uh, you can hear my voice, get yourself a starter set or get on those uh, rules that are online and just read them. Because quick. once you read them, you, you realize the similarities and very quickly catch the differences. Quick plug for uh, us. Last episode, so episode 169, if this is your first episode of Dial H for Heroclix that you're turning in, tuning into, Calder and I did go through a top 10 countdown list of the biggest rules changes that we thought would affect you. So tune in to that. Um, moving on. Uh, these are real quick, easy ones. Just uh, What are your guys' favorite sets? If I go back in time, it's still Amazing Spider-Man, and I'm sorry, it's because I like Alyosha Craven, but I also like <laughs> Brother Voodoo, and I I really like the mad. I like I think I said this every time I'm on somebody else's podcast. I really love the Amazing Spider-Man's entrance of the magical poofy poof stuff. <laughs> Amber, what about you? I uh, I think I'm still kind of hovering around the uh, Days of Future Past Gravity feed. I can get behind that. Yeah, that's, that's a good that's... Uh What about your guys? This is uh, pretty generic. Pretty, yeah, it's out there. But uh, favorite standard power, I guess maybe before change, after change doesn't really matter. Go, go for it. I'm gonna go with post change. Today I played with Invincible and I played against a character with Mystics. Guess what? I wasn't taking Mystics. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. I was playing in, We were playing in Earth Earth Sealed. I had two Thenas. Both of them start with Invincible, and they were attacking Hela and didn't care about that Mystics damage. Woohoo! I'm finally, and I'm great. Like, so happy that they changed that. Amber, what about you? Uh, I love Quake. Quake. Yeah. I've always loved Quake. Um, Post the things that you can do too. with Quake. And the characters, when the characters have specials quake, I'll tell you something, that Days of Future Past set, there's an avalanche that can quake from three squares away and up walls, and it's fantastic. <laughs> um, and now, the new quake allows you to single target quake, and I'm so happy. And I have to get a, an actual official clarification on this, but there is a chance that you can quake and use Blades Claws Fangs together. That'd be really We're still trying to figure Lord. out. We're still trying to figure out if there's like if there's rules to tell us we can't do it, but we haven't been able to find them yet. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, did you guys notice a lot of these not, rules changes were I'm more about what they didn't that like what they left out rather than what they put in the rule book? Yeah. Like they didn't put damage depletion modifier in there, so they had to immediately release a rules update and be like, yeah, we got rid of it just because it's yeah. not in there, so it, it doesn't yeah. exist anymore. But you're not missing anything. It's not, it's not in there anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay, what are your favorite keywords? I have a two-way tie on mine, and it's mystical. Actually, a three-way tie. It's mystical soldier and animal. Wow, generic all the way. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't like making the distinction between Marvel and DC. I like all my all my stuff. You guys can hear me, right? I like you all. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I like soldiers. Uh, Alyosha reminded me that animals are awesome. 
Uh, <laughs> and just every time you're just gonna slip that Alyosha in. Do you guys ever make it up to Canada to play? I swear, if you put Alyosha Craven down in front of me, <laughs> tables are going to flip, sir. I'm, gonna yeah, I'm just make gonna it drive my... back. <laughs> what is? I don't often keep Golden Age figures, but my Alyosha is in a framed like box. <laughs> I will, I will unframe him, take him out of that awesome box that he's in, and just to play and just to watch you flip the table. <laughs> It's getting and mystical broken. because I like magical comic books. <laughs> magical poof de poof. Magical poof de poof. <laughs> Amber, what, what are your favorite keywords? Um, surprisingly, my favorite keywords are actually Teen Titans and X Force and Exiles. Really? Wait, yeah. you like the Exiles? I mean, I read the whole first run of the Exiles. It was fantastic, but I don't think they've ever made very many good Exiles. <laughs> they have not. And that doesn't stop her problem, from liking things. <laughs> that's that fair. That's they fair. They have made is that three of the exiles that they've made have been primes. So you can't even play them together. That's when you just do homebrew games and make up rules as you go. Like whatever. It's you mean exiles. When they, ATA, they, just when they like started squad spree. When they started re- exact, that was exactly what I was getting ready to bring up. They released how many of those primes before they released the ATA? So yeah. no one could play with them. Four yeah. of them, yeah. It wasn't a until lot. the last one came out. Like, okay, yeah, now you can. Yeah, like, oh yeah, by the way, here. So stupid. Okay. You so... know, I figured. Wait, I figured you guys would have like at least thrown a bone to Alpha Flight. I mean, come on. Great <laughs> no. keyword. Hey, you know what? We love Alpha Flight, and as an idea, when WizKid starts liking Alpha Flight, I'm sure we'll like them in the game. Hey, we got a new Ooh. Vindicator <laughs> recently. Uh, yeah, there was a, a new uh, one. Uh, oh, the OP kit OP indicator? Kit ones, yeah. Right yeah. after they got rid of all the other Alpha Flight characters from Invincible Iron Man? Yeah. Thanks, yep. guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one, yep. Um, <laughs> so, okay. just <laughs> I have to ask this. Now, if you are a long-time listener of Dial H for Hero Clicks, then you know that WizKid, WizKids hates our guts. They won't answer any of my tweets. They, they just hate us. But... <laughs> But, uh, Married with Clicks apparently has some kind of relationship with, uh, with WizKids. Well, it sounds like we're about to lose that, but... <laughs> no, no, we won't, we won't throw you under the bus. Really, the question is, where did we go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, step one is video content. Mm. Yeah, they seem to really like the visuals. Yeah, because um, our, our relationship with WizKids... For them is advertising. Uh, we have a captive audience. Uh, people who like Hero Clicks watch our channel already, so they know people are watching us. Uh, I don't. I know there are channels with more subscribers than us, uh, but they're different in nature. We are a strict Hero Clicks channel, and as a result, we have the Hero Clicks captive audience. So we're not as important an element to them as say Scott Porter, where Scott Porter is a celebrity and people will draw to the celebrity and he's also part of that hyper RPG group and he's got contacts with geek and sundry. So he, it's the wide audience. We attract the captive audience and keep people kind of watching and keeping an eye on hero clicks. And because we're video content, uh, people get to see things from us. So, uh, and a lot of people, you know, they see, Oh my gosh, they have, uh, unboxings and whiz kids does send us stuff. Uh, and that didn't come immediately. Um, like it took a couple years of us releasing content before they started giving us anything, and we used that, you know, that that uh, request for preview content again and again and again. Uh, and it wasn't until I started, we we really started to develop a conversation. We started some of the people who work at WizKids started uh, talking to us occasionally, and then the I asked the right person at the right time. Hey, who should I talk to directly? Because I don't think we're getting quite through on the on the form. I got that contact, and we made contact with WizKids because they had actually been interested in getting us uh, some stuff. And boom, there it was. Uh, we got in touch with their marketing team, and it, it's been it's been a great relationship so far. Uh, and I, a lot of people wonder why, or a lot of podcasters have come to me and said, "Why? Why can't I? Why can't I?" And I'm not going to rag on you guys. I'm not going to rag on any other podcaster. A lot of cases, it comes down to diplomatic commentary and constructive criticism. If you've got a problem, 
it's not enough to say I hate this thing. It's another thing to say, you know, this is an interesting choice. If it was me, I would have done this, but I don't have that decision power kind of thing, right? Yeah, and, no, it makes sense. But yeah, then, we. I've, I've always had a diplomatic sense. criticism. You guys now, are so for... nice up in Canada, though. Down here in America, we just hate things. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. For me, a lot of it stems from almost a, like a, a playful joke. Um, when we were first starting out, uh, I was very, very active in like the Facebook groups and stuff like that. Now, I'm, I'm not as much as I used to be for other reasons, um, but there was a lot of uh, Facebook interaction with a lot of people. And at the time that Trinity War was coming out, uh, they had done a little partnership with DC All Access, yeah. and they had given them some to try and go beyond Scott Porter and feelers of, like, who else we, can we get to advertise this? And DC All Access had done a uh, quick little unboxing, and one of their regular hosts had done it, and the wider HeroClix community did not receive her well. Um, it was really, really blasted all over the place. Uh, people that didn't know Hero Clicks were fine. The regular DC All Access audience were fine with it because they're used to this host. And they're like, oh, cool, look, a superhero game. Whereas their, uh, their target Cap audience... Well, with, their captive audience, not their target. Sorry, their captive audience with the Hero Clicks, everybody just blasted it. And there's conversations all over the place. And on one of the Hero Clicks groups um someone was just like oh you should get this youtuber to do it and uh justin zirin who's the president of whiz kids was like well hey if she's into hero clicks we'd have no problem contacting her and as a kind of playful joke i responded back i was like well i'm not exactly famous but if you want a cute little brunette to open hero clicks and know what she's talking about give me a call and he responded back. He's like, don't worry, Amber, we have our eye on you. <laughs> she, <laughs> I was like, not in a creepy wait way. Wait a second. <laughs> okay, then. Now, I can confirm, though, about that video you were talking about a second ago. That was not a good video. That woman did not it, know what she was talking no, about. No, it's horrible. <laughs> Ooh, a rare. <laughs> she got really excited for that, like, was Sinestro. It? it was a rare Sinestro yeah. from Trinity War. Or no, it was Shaggy Man or something. It was like a rare Shaggy Man. <laughs> it was like, what? Why are you excited <laughs> for this? Yeah, we'll give her an A for effort and an F in uh, completion. Yeah, <laughs> and, like it, it, it's that thing. It's it's hard to watch that as it, it, Scott Porter was, I think, the godsend. Yeah, a celebrity who likes hero clicks and knows the game and plays the game. And I mean, I remember watching him on Geek and Sundry and just schooling everybody because everybody's goofing around on that show. And I get it; it's a fun show, and they're trying to be funny. But then Scott Porter takes three actions and beats everybody. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God, you guys all suck at this game. <laughs> and the, the funny thing with Scott, and actually goes back to DC All Access, was, uh, like, I don't know things that went behind the scenes or anything, but years ago we had a fan send me a link to a DC All Access uh, video, and he's like, I don't know if you have watched a, uh, so and so show. He's like, but check out this actor who has Hero Clicks sitting in his trailer. And it was a DC All Access just, like, um, interview with him. And he had gone into his trailer for whatever show he was working on. And he was like, yeah, check out, like, here's my Harley and Ivy duo. And here's this piece I love. And, oh, man, I love this game. And it was just, like, that was the moment where kind of a big awareness happened. It was like, hey, look at this celebrity that plays Heroclix. And then uh, whatever months down the road from that DC All Access episode, he started doing the first unboxings for Whiskers. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. You guys have been at it a really long time, though. And thank <laughs> on behalf of the Heroclix community, thank you for all that you've put into Heroclix. Um, so well, thank you, you guys, because without the listeners, without, yeah. without other podcasters, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> Dial without H, our audience, there is no us. <laughs> Dial H is owed a little bit of love for me. I was listening to Dial H before we started listening, before we started doing our show. And I was like, audio content's cool. Let's get our faces on video so that we don't are we, we're we're not competing with. Them. Yeah. It always has surprised me how the different formats, whether it's podcasting or it's video, YouTube videos, or even like bloggers and stuff like that, 
we all overlap very easily. Have you noticed that? Like, we all are, we're kind of in contact with each other. We talk to each other. Yeah, we are our own community to a yeah. certain degree. I mean, I regularly talk with Edward Shelton and uh, who's the other one? Uh, Aaron Cantu. I can't forget Aaron Cantu's name. Uh, we're really we're really close. Uh, any like a lot of people who have a podcast. Uh, Alpha Alpha Strike Hero Clicks. I talk to on a regular mm-hmm. basis. Uh, you've been in contact with the comic book or comicbookresources.com. Oh, the comicbook.com, yeah, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, you've been in contact with them. Um, and it's it's that whole thing where we all kind of share information, share our advice. Uh, some people do things better than us, and we ask them what's up. Uh, I, and one of the biggest biggest issues I think we finally managed to address has been sound. <laughs> sound has been our war, and it, it, it took me thinking to myself, like, Okay, maybe I should talk to somebody who does a strictly audio podcast and find out. And I think it was uh, Clicks Off I've been talking to, and uh, I mean they only recently upgraded the sound equipment. We had the right equipment, just been taking the wrong approach. Yeah. Our our sound problem has always been actually been acoustics, not the actual equipment. Yeah. So. Gotcha. So we changed location on the last uh, last Metafix episode, yeah. which we'll be releasing later tonight. Okay. I mean. Yeah, this should be out by the time we're done talking. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Hey, uh, Calder, do you have uh, any yeah, last questions? Uh, no, I think that about covers all our bases. All right, cool, cool. Let's uh, move on in the podcast. Let's play some games. Let's do some segments, have some fun with it. Uh, the first one we're going to do is a longtime favorite by a lot of people that listen to this podcast. And when I did poll uh, on Twitter, this is one of the comments. Many of the comments that weren't directly about what was on the poll were about Bad Samaritan. So we're going to play some Bad Samaritan. It's a back. <laughs> Uh, if you do not know how to play Bad Samaritan, what is going to happen is I have chosen three figures. Uh, they are all modern age. I am not going to name who the figure is, but my buddy Calder has a random number generator, 1 through 20. He's going to give me a number. I have a list in front of me of clues. Uh, these clues are things like team ability, point value, set, set number, etc. Anything about the hero click. And as far as if it has a power, it'll be on the top click of the dial. So you give me the number. I give you the clues. Each round, everybody gets one guess to see who it is. And if you guess it, you win. If you don't, uh, you get three rounds until you lose. Cool? Yeah. All right, Calder, hit me with the first number. The first number is number six. All right, number six is going to be a named keyword of the figure. And that is going to be Wild Pack. Wild Pack. By the way, if you're listening at home, uh, I do encourage you to pause, see if you can come up with a guess, hit play, and uh, see if you got it right. Is it... Yeah, definitely do that. Is it... What was his name? He was John Walker's sidekick when he was U.S. agent. He was in the uh, Civil War, the recent set. Battlestar? This is the first time that this has ever happened in the history of Bad Samaritan. <gasps> Nailed the day! <laughs> where someone got it on the first round, first, first Woo! Uh, pick. Oh so, my gosh, that's awesome. God, oh, give Barry the clicks a oh. chance, Calder. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but... Damn, that was fast. I'm going to have to pick another figure... Here I, we, we go through to be fair, I own every Captain America and every supporting crew member, so <laughs> I'll, I'll stop. So it's just well done. I'll give you that. Well done. All right, let's go. Let's go to figure two. Give me a number. Okay, randomizing again. Three. Number three is going to be the set, and the set is going to be Joker's Wild. It's not much to go yep. off of. No. <laughs> is it Batman? It is not Batman. <sighs> so... Is it Killer Moth? It is not Killer Moth. I was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. Amber? Is it Joker? It is not the Joker. All right, round just, uh, which, which one? <laughs> <laughs> that did cover a majority of the set. Now, um, <laughs> Calder, give me a number. All right, click and click. 15. 15. 15 is opening defense power. You guys got screwed because there isn't one. 
who doesn't have a defense power in Jordan's That's wild? Weird. Sound. Calder, is that your house? Yeah, my house is haunted. Uh, Bob Marley like, <laughs> stomping upstairs. It's a it's a ranch house, man. Come on, it's it's cows. It's old. Little yeah, little cows. cows. Inside of your house. Cows. I know. Yeah, that's exactly how that works. All right, what are your guesses? Um, if you guys, do you guys have anything? I'm gonna guess Court of Owls. Um, henchman or th- initiate? Initiate. That was my guess too. <laughs> that's your guess too. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, that, you, well, that's, that's why I was thinking different, different guess. Yeah, that's not because... it, by the way. That's that's a good guess, but that is not it. That was who I was thinking of. Do you uh... have another one then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get throw another guess out there. No, he stole my guess. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Calder, what I'll about you? Um, I'm pretty sure the Thanagarian doesn't have a defense power. Are you cheating? <laughs> no, I swear. To... <laughs> did, wait, did you just channel my hatred of the Thanagarian in order to pick that one? <laughs> well, he is super lame. I do hate him. So I, I, I am on record as probably hating that figure the most. <laughs> oh, I will, I will challenge you. Snap it off his base. <laughs> my lord. Well, it's got a cool skull. They do though. break really easily. It is cool. Calder, if you're cheating, man, I swear. I'm not. No, I'm not, no, 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 I swear. I'm going to sick those cheating. cows on you, man. <laughs> We're just good luck charms. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> We're thinking all the crap I out of there, right? Yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> Hit me with a number, Calder. Okay, randomizer. Do, 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 do. Number 13. Number 13 is opening movement power, and it's sidestep. <laughs> There's half that set. This is it. Ninety percent of the game right now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You did not give me much, but don't worry. I'm sure Calder will guess it first try. Uh, <laughs> um. I'm gonna go with the atom. It is not the atom. I'm convinced Calder's cheating. He's like going through. I know. He's I'm on really not. Like, right I now. Get... <laughs> uh, I'll go with Iron Fist. I'm pretty sure one of them has to have sidestep. It is not Iron Fist. All right. Amber? Uh, I'm trying to think of the, the guys I faced against today that had opening sidestep. You know what? Odin the Destroyer. It is not Odin the Destroyer. Ah, that was not that was not a bad game. That would've been so great. So did I. <laughs> All right, call her. Number. All right. Five. Five is from Rarity. That's not gonna do you much. It is a common. Yahoo! <laughs> you got a common with sidestep. Jeez. Common with sidestep? Yup. Harley Quinn. It is not Harley Quinn. Back the was that your guess? Was it Joker? Yeah. It is not the Joker. It's a joke. Oh, that would have been great. Jack, Jack, uh, it's a jackal. It's a jackal. It's a jackal. Jackal. I'll go Captain America. It is not Captain America. Round three. I might win this one. Yeah, I get bad rolls. Randomize 16. 16 is an opening damage power. It is range combat expert. <gasps> Green Arrow. It is not Green Arrow, but that was a damn good guess. But he's also not a common. Oh, is he not? I thought that was the one with Ken. No, he's a rare, I think. Stupid JSA. I'm looking at it up right now. Oh, I guess it... No, you're right. I'm wrong. I apologize. There is a Green Arrow. The total yeah, matches all Joker's Wild. The Joker's Wild one, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Up to... <laughs> He's it's because we didn't get set guess on this one. We have yeah. no idea how to narrow it down. <laughs> hmm. You know, actually looking at the figure I'm looking at and then clicking back to that green arrow, 
This was way better. <laughs> Is it Hawkeye? It's not Hawkeye. Uh -huh. That's what I was thinking, too. Oh. All right, Calder. Let me win this one. Let me have this. <laughs> <laughs> Sidestep range combat expert, huh? And he's a common. And he's a common. Is it he? Is that? Is that? Are you gonna really give it to me like that? That'll sort of make it easier, maybe. You know, it's been so long since I played this game. I knew ah. outright not to do that, but I totally gave you the sex of the character. So like, <laughs> of that, like that—that's one of the like little tricks of the trade when you're playing it. Like, wait for the the oh, person God. doing it to screw up. Man. You know, I was going to say Rattler before, but now I know he does not have ranged combat expert. Ah. Uh, crap. I... I'm going to get it. I'm going to This is one. This is way harder than I thought it was going to be. Wow. Oh, uh, man. Sidestep range combat. See, now I can't even figure out or think of another figure with sidestep range combat expert. Let's go with... I wish we would have got point value or something. Crap. We're set. <laughs> We're set, yeah. That would have been really helpful. To be, to be fair, uh, remember I said it was 1 through 20? 17 through 20 are all free plays, and you can pick whatever you want, and you didn't hit any of those this whole night. Oh, that's bad. We also first picked <laughs> one, though, right? But you, you, clearly you didn't need them. Yeah. Called her well, that was, that was luck, to be honest with you. <laughs> I totally forgot that was one of the things too. All right, man. Do you have a do you have a guess? Um, the mercenaries from De no, they have energy explosion top style and like running shot or whatever. Um, ah, uh, I think Punisher Squad has range combat. We'll go with Punisher Squad. It is not Punisher Squad. Oh, all right. It is. Zero. Can I get one extra guess? Just and this doesn't count because you won already. Sure. Why not? Is it the werewolf from Undead? No, it's not. Okay. Oh, that'd be easy. Zero, zero, 009 from Elseworlds, Gunfighter. Gunfighter. Oh! That's... Yeah. Yeah. He's actually, he's a solid piece for 25 points. We need... yeah, 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 he's got the high noon trait and everything now. That's really cool. Um, by the way, anyone on HC Realms, for some reason he put high noon trait twice on his figure. I'm not really sure why, but whatever. Moving on. You guys want to do one more since Color Ruin the first round? Oh, I'm so. Well, come on. Uh. <laughs> I'm I'm good if you have another one ready to go. Uh, I like. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me two seconds. Sure. I just clicked on one. Calder, give me a number. Okay. Well, was not ready for the randomize. Again, randomize number one. Number one is team ability, Avengers. Oh, jeez. Ah, oh, that's so telling. <laughs> <laughs> that's the giveaway right there. Um. I feel like it's gonna be a weird one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're I'm picking that one. too. Bad Samaritan's like, always picking the like weirdest characters yeah. that no one ever plays. We're just like that has an Avengers team ability. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go with the Thor for now. It is not Thor. Okay. I say Doctor Strange. It is not Doctor Strange. I will go with Swordsman. It is not the Swordsman. Next right. round. And number two. Wow, it's kind of bad. Point value, 75 points. Uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> Here we go. That, that, that right there. 75 point Avenger. There's like almost none of those, right? <laughs> Everybody that I keep thinking of actually has the Defenders team. Ability. <laughs> <laughs> Avengers team ability at 75 points. Uh, I I want to dig into Civil War, but I think they stripped most of those characters uh, team abilities. Also, I don't think 75 points was a point. Value. That, and that also, I was going to say, that all came in 60, 70, 80, or 90. So it's not yeah. Civil so That kills that set, which is great. That narrows it down a bit. You you eliminated one set out of the like twenty that are currently modern. 
Yep. And like every one of those has like Avengers in it if it's Marvel too, so. Mm. Hmm. Well, except for uh, Uncanny X Men. Oh, no, wait. Or Daredevil. Oh my god, I did. I guessed that there were 20 modern sets and there are 20 modern sets. Uh, it is. Was that your guess? Yeah, Daredevil. Daredevil, it is not Daredevil. Hmm. <sighs> Goes for seventy-five points with Avengers team ability. Yes. Yeah. It's. <laughs> it's uh, and I don't want to guess obvious because that would be stupid. Um. In the history of modern, modern age, it has only ever been an obvious character like one time, <laughs> and that was just to see if we could throw people off. It was, I think it was, like, Batman or something. That's what I'm like, okay, I don't know if they've ever actually done Batman. I'm kidding, X-Men set actually had the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> Only the, whatever, the Unity team, that'd be Rogue, Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver would have it. Oh, but, but wait. I don't remember if they were... But they also had five. X-Men, I think, didn't they? They had... Dual team abilities. Oh, they might, yeah, because they could use it as a free you know action after they did something. Silver would be around the... And by the way, if a character Quicksilver does have two seven. team abilities, I would have given you both team abilities. Is oh. So I'll throw that both out. Both of those are 75. <laughs> How much does that hurt your brain? Mm. <laughs> Stop, it hurts. That's a... <laughs> uh, I gave my guess on this Yeah, one. you did already Love give me a guess. guess. This is... I already fucked up. No yes. pressure. <laughs> no pressure here. <laughs> uh, did you have a guess, Sir Calder? No, I'm. Ah, oh, it's racking my brain. It hurts. He spent all of his brain power on the first. Uh, I yeah. Game. Yeah, Swordsman was a good guess to get it out of the way. Oh. See, that's what I thought. I'm I like, think no he's even like seventy-five points too. No, he's forty. <laughs> Like the new ones. Yeah. Oh, the new ones. Because the other one is out of the game. Yeah. Or at least out of this game, because this is modern. Uh, uh, oh, what was that? What was that lady's name? And in... No, she didn't have Avengers. She had S.H.I.E.L.D. Never mind. Uh, Were you thinking of Sharon? Yeah, she has S.H.I.E.L.D. That's... Yeah. Uh, mm, we're doing, it's like, I feel like it's a, a, a you're gonna get like minutes of ums and ers and ahs. So, yeah, this like, is a lot of a lot of great radio right here. here yeah. Yeah. Okay. Give me give me one more number. And we'll see if we can. Get okay. Uh, Eleven. Eleven is oh shit. Name of trait, and the name of trait is runaways. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> So which runaways are 75 points? <laughs> hmm. Oh, isn't is Nico? Uh, Nico Minora? Nico yeah. Minora. But she, had, she didn't have Avengers. She had Mystic's team ability. Didn't she? I just knew she was 75 points. She is 75 mm-hmm. points. That is correct. Uh, um, okay, who are all... Iron Lad is too many points. He's like 100, right? Nico Minora is 75 points. There's that one dude. His name's like Stein, like Frankenstein, but it's Chase Stein. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, Chase Stein. That'll be my guess. It is not Chase Stein. Oh, oh. it's not Chase Stein. And it is definitely a runaway. Uh, Gertrude and Old Lace are 80 points. They're, I thought they were 50. I thought they were less than that. Mm. Yeah, Molly's only like 45, 50. Yeah. Um, Since you guys do know that it is a Runaways, I went ahead and clicked the Runaways keyword just to see how many uh, Runaways characters. You've basically named pretty much all of them except for the character that I... <laughs> oh, no. of course. <laughs> of course. Um, Is Miss America, did she have a Runaways trait? I didn't think so. Oh! But I know she had the... What was the one that looked like Starfire? Carolina D? There it is. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm glad Woof. 
I'm glad you guys got one tonight instead of Calder stealing them all from you. Just sorry. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Greedy American. Got to steal everything. <laughs> all right. Let's what? go on to the next segment. Uh, we have a casual comparisons for you guys. And this week, we always let our guests choose our casual comparison. This week, we are comparing Superman. Jason, will you tell me which Superman this is? Uh, it's your standard DC, uh, I don't know, Earth One, I guess they call it, Superman. All right, yeah, so I guess that's what their world is. What we do in casual comparison, we pick three figures that are the same universe iteration, just different actual figures. We're going to compare three different Supermans. At the end of it, we're all going to vote and see which one is the official Dial H4 Hero Click Superman. Jason, you want to start us off with one of them? All right. Um, and this is the one from. I'm going to start with. What's probably going to be the one I'm going to fight for, but I'm going to lose this fight anyway. <laughs> and we're going to go back to Superman Wonder Woman. And it's going to be uh, figure number 49, Superman. Uh, if, you know, if you're not familiar with the model, this is the one that comes in three stages. He's taking off his shirt, kind of flying, and then is flying. Uh, he's 175 points. Um, he's got the odds are against me tree. So at the end of your turn, the Superman was given a non-free action. This turn and an opposing uh, force... Uh, has more characters on the map than your force. Place an outnumber token on this card. Give Superman a free action. Remove two outnumber tokens from his card and make a close or ranged attack. In addition to which, she's got the strongest hero of all uh, special attack power. Superman can use super strength, and he has this on his first five clicks. Uh, when Superman hits a character uh, with close combat attack and the attack roll is 10 or higher, you may knock back that character a number of squares equal to the attack roll Ignoring all terrain along the path, destroying all blocking terrain along that path, and deal that character damage equal to the number of walls and number of squares of blocking terrain destroyed with a maximum of five. Uh, he's indomitable. He's got Superman ally team ability. He comes with 175 points. Um, he has some mid-dial in power, some early-dial in pervious. Uh, and he flies. He's got six range. He starts with sidestep. He's a little bit more tentative as a Superman. You want me to go, like, deep detail on this guy, or...? No, that's probably good. I mean, okay. most people know at this point these figures. If you're listening to a, a Heroclix podcast, you probably actively play Heroclix, and this was a pretty common Superman back when it came out. Uh, Amber, you want to cover one of these for us? Uh, yeah, so we're... Yeah. Yeah, one so um, one of the other ones that we're looking at was the uh, number 50 from Justice League Trinity War. Uh, he was 250 points... Um, or uh, one fifteen. Um, <laughs> so he had a trait: a new kind of Justice League. Adjacent friendly characters with a lower point value in the Justice League keyword can use the Superman Ally Team ability. Friendly characters named Batman or Wonder Woman don't have to be adjacent or lower point value. Uh, it was a similar trait that the Wonder Woman and the Batman had in that set too, as they were trying to work as a trio, and they each kind of gave each other something. Uh, that was such a cool freeze. thing, yeah. by the way, that they decided to do with those three figures. Very full of synergy. It was great. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, freeze breath, Superman can use incapacitate. When he does, if he uses it as a close combat action, he may target all adjacent opposing characters. If he uses it as a ranged combat action and hits the target, an area of effect may include all untargeted characters that are adjacent to a hit target. So mass amounts of incapacitate. Uh, his defense ability was Superman can use impervious. At the beginning of your turn, if Superman was damaged by an opposing character's attack since your last turn, heal him one damage, uh, which happened a lot. Uh, inspiring Hero, here, which is his damage ability. Uh, Superman can use leadership when he does and succeeds. Modify the attack and defense values of all friendly characters by plus one until your next turn. I really like And he had the typical uh, hypersonic top dial, a lot of super strength. Um, invincible on his highest and impervious on his lower down. Calder. Um, how about you tell me world's finest 49, correct? Yep. How about you cover that one? Uh, okay. Yeah, we have a 200 point Superman, Superman ally, Justice League, Kryptonian, Metropolis, Reporter, and Trinity keywords. Real name Clark Kent. Indom, Flight. Uh, no special powers, does have a trait, it's called World's Finest. Superman's powers and abilities can't be countered. If Superman is adjacent to a friendly character named Batman, Superman can use a Batman ally team ability. He's your typical hypersonic super strength beat stick Superman. Um, attack never dips below 10. And damage... Damn. 
four, 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 six, four, 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 six five, clicks five. of four and two clicks of five. So damage output's pretty good on this guy. Uh, let's go ahead and he's vote. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, he's he's simplistic. I like him. Uh, Amber, who who are you gonna vote for tonight? I think if we're gonna do a definitive like good comic accurate representation of. Uh, the Superman, I would go with the Trinity War one at his highest point value, which okay. would be the 250 point dollar. Okay. Jason? See, I really like the one I chose for a number of reasons. Um, and not to oversell it, it's the fact that if you talk about comic accuracy, Superman doesn't do hit and runs until he needs to do hit and runs. Superman kind of comes into the battle, as it were, not running but trying to diffuse the situation before he tries to go in running i think definitively as a comic book character the superman i chose because he sidesteps in he's still able to do damage he's got the defense powers to back it up um but he also when he hits you he throws you through walls <laughs> multiple walls if necessary uh i did like that imagine how many times you read in the comic book where he punches a guy and he goes through a building like that's that's Superman right there. And uh, I, I think because of that, and then he does go to Flurry, hits you twice instead, or and then eventually resorts to, in the last couple clicks, his hypersonic movement. Uh, I think it's it's definitively a Superman, for sure. Um, not necessarily like the crush you in the game of Hero Clicks Superman, but I think this reeks of Superman, by far. I might be playing the game wrong. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Calder, what do you think? I am going also with Jason's pick for a completely different reason than what he chose. Ooh. But um, I'm not really a fan of Superman. Uh, I'd actually say I hate him with my heart and soul. But <laughs> I don't think Superman should have Invincible, especially since he would be able to reduce Mystics. And Superman, one of his few things that like gets him or whatever, one of his few quote-unquote weaknesses, is that he's not really great against magic. So I feel like with all the kryptonite powers that Alex has or whatever, Superman should always be susceptible to penetrating damage. And this guy has impervious, impervious, and their vulnerability, vulnerability, and then toughness. And I think that's, you know, good for Superman to have. Right on. So that's your guess. You got two solid. I can, I can make a tie right now. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Uh, I, I, I am going to go with the same one, but also for basically... The same reason that Jason said. I have always thought that Superman is very reactionary as a character. He d he doesn't uh, he's not a first striker. I've never thought of him as a first striker. He always, by the way, if you've noticed reading comic books, he always gets his butt handed to him at the beginning of like every fight before he finally overcomes. But he does. He like wades in. He's a little bit more calculating than just run and gun Justice League Trinity War Superman. Now, do I think that that is a fantastic figure? Yes, it is a very, very good figure. I just don't think it's an accurate representation of the characterization of Superman. So, plus this sculpt is interesting. Him doing the whole changing from Clark Kent into being Superman thing, I thought was pretty sweet. So, yeah, all right. Uh, Superman Wonder Woman number 49. That's going to be Dial H's official Superman. Moving on, we got another another segment. We've been talking about some hidden gems. We got a lot of new new rule changes, which made me go back and start looking at some of these older figures in a different way. And I realized something. There's a figure that I think is start going to start seeing a lot more play than it used to, just based solely off of how they changed the rules of objects in the game. So let's go to uh, 006 from, see, the world's finest set, Mr. Nobody. And I want your guys' opinions on this. Let me know if you, you think I'm off base or you think I'm accurate on this. First of all, he's 55 points, but he has a trait that says it belongs to nobody now. When placing objects during game setup, you may place your opponent's objects with how they are taking the game. And obviously going to make a lot of objects here in the future. I guarantee we're going to see some in the Harley Quinn set as well. The ability to just rip somebody's Mjolnir away from them and put it on your side of the field to keep it away from them, I think that's outstanding. 
and I think this figure is going to see a little bit more play now. Uh, he also has a, um, an attack power. It's called Sanity is a Fleeting Thing. Give Mr. Nobody a power action and choose an opposing character within range and line of fire. His range is five, by the way. And choose two slots on its dial that have standard powers. Until your next turn or until the chosen character's dial is clicked, the chosen character can't use the powers displayed in those slots, but instead can use powers as if the colors in those slots were exchanged. So it just flops two things, which I think would be really hella fun, the, just the weird stuff that you could probably do with that. <laughs> I've done, I'm guilty of some of the weird stuff with that, especially oh, yeah. in the seal. There's a lot of sealed for this set. Uh, have you ever switched somebody's energy explosion into Battle Fury? <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep imagining like scenarios where you run up against this character. He's got super strength and impervious. And you're like, <laughs> nope. Now take this. Huh. Alpha strike to the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just um, think that would be cool. And yeah, especially with the new rules, like you were saying, what we saw in Thor, what we've already seen. Like, how many of us have actually seen suffered ourselves a uh what's the word i'm looking for um an overdrive team right mm -hmm. like that's another piece of suffering we all have to deal with is mr overdrive driving 16 squares across the board with what's her name um since the sam wilson character, oh yeah right uh if you have a mr nobody on your team and they have they rely on an overdrive to move watch them weep uncontrollably as you take all their objects and put them in the corner. <laughs> I think this is going to be super fun when you sit down to play against somebody that you... Because Thor is the new hotness right now, so everybody wants to get their hands on as many of those objects as possible. They're going to be yep. using three of those objects on the same team. You sit down with your Mr. Nobody, throw that on the table, and they're like, well, well fuck you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I brought Mistress Death and Mjolnir. Yeah, you, you don't, you're going to have to walk for Mjolnir, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> the best thing on that is about half of these objects are now equip any, which yeah. means not only are you stealing your opponent's objects, you are now equipping them to yourself. Yeah, I, you can I'm take that have Mjolnir. Mr. Nobody take Mjolnir, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, think about it. Like, if you steal three of their objects, right, and then you equip them to your characters, you effectively, because a lot of these people are going to be, especially probably on like meta teams, they're not going to be running the Mjolnir on the on a team with the Thor that gets it for free, right? They're going to be giving it to yeah. Mis Mr. Staff. Yeah. So That's that right. means they paid for these, which means yeah. you're immediately ripping like 15, 20, 30 points out from their team just immediately at the yeah. start of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that this is like... When this figure came out, like, it was wah wah. But now. Yeah, now it's, oh my gosh, this guy might be necessary soon. Um, <laughs> yeah. He is modern. He, right yeah. now, he's oh, yeah. modern. So. He, he's modern until at least next year, July. Or June, sorry, June. They do the cuts in June now. Plus, so, I. Yeah. I mean, on top dial, he has shape change super senses. Yep. I and think he, second click, he's got prob. Yeah, and on yeah, second so... click, he has probability control. So. Now, don't get me wrong. You're not going to be able to fit this guy on very many theme teams, but politician. Yeah, right. Brotherhood of evil. <laughs> Brotherhood of evil and politician. Like that's oh, not going to go far, uh, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> not when you're ripping thirty points away from your opponent at the beginning of the match and equipping those to your figures. I just think that that's great. Definitely. So, yeah. Especially if you can phase him out first turn, and then you can push him using his ability or whatever, and now he's stealthed if you phase him into some hindering, and now he's got stealth and prob to back you up a little bit. An another Not thing a few, uh, myself and a few friends have been discussing with him is if you bring him to like a tournament format, uh, and you think to yourself, well, I might not need to use this guy in every single game, we still have the Justice League teleporter and the better suited for this foe trait. So if you happen to bring him to one of these competitive tournaments, you're afraid of the kind of things you're going to run into, just bring something you can replace him with. <laughs> oh, this is, I, I really, really hope people go, yes, I'm definitely going to put this on a meta team. More, yeah. it, It's such a trolley piece. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's one of my plans. I am going to Rock World Cup, and right now I'm only qualified for the 400-point the the limited... 
tournament for the semifinal event, I suck at that format, and I'm already thinking Mr. Nobody has to be a part of my team in order to help me get a little bit of a leg up. Mm. Oh, man, I hope we didn't ruin your like your secret plan to take over. Oh, dude, I don't, I, I've stopped secret plans years ago. Uh, <laughs> if, if it, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. I can tell right. people whatever. If it's not going to work, I can tell everybody and it's not going to work. If it is going to work, I can tell everybody it's still going to work, right? So that's so, been my mentality recently. So let, let's hypothetically say they have like 25 points worth of objects on their team or whatever. You're, you're investing 55 points for this figure. Now, it, the worst you want your character to do in a game is like match points. So if you have like a 50-point character and you knock out another 50-point character before yours gets knocked out, I always feel like yeah, it did its work, you know? It, yep. it at least equaled itself out. 55 points minus the 25 points that you automatically took away, you're not really investing that much. And plus no. you have a probability control character that if just for funsies you can uh, get that sanity is fleeting power to trigger. <laughs> oh, man, if you, can, if you can pull that off, and there's enough characters out there that he can just make a nightmare of, I, I would love <laughs> to see him in action with him. Oh, man, you could just neuter characters. Especially yeah. with, like, uh, in, any kind of movement attack is... Um, because it, it says choose two slots on this dial that have standard powers, so it, it can't pick anything with special power, which kind of sucks. But there's a lot of characters out there that just have printed running shot, charge, or hypersonic speed. In which case, yeah. if if you flip those with anything else on their dial, you just neutered their ability to move and attack. That's fantastic. Yeah. Also, you got to remember that starting movement is ten movement with phasing. If you want to push that problem, you're now in stealth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, as far as Hidden Gem, I, I really think this figure did not used to be that, did not qualify for that, but now is. Uh, and I guess we'll see. So, listeners, if you manage to use this character, he works out for you. Um, shoot us a tweet or something on Facebook. Let us know, like, yeah, guys, Mr. Nobody does work now. I'm really <laughs> excited to hear those stories. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's move on. Uh, we have one last segment. And uh, Calder, you want to take a trip with me? And that was part of the show where Calder comes out and takes a trip to the value corner. All right, so we're going down. Down to the quarter, going ladies and gentlemen. Down. So we like we like deals here. We yeah, like we deals. deals. I'm poor. All right, yeah. <laughs> I, I spent enough on this game. Give me the, give me the best deals you got, sir. The deal. All right, so... I had a figure. Best figure. Just great. Amazing. Is it's it good? Terrific. It's Is that good? He's all right. He's, well, <laughs> maybe he's not that good. He's, he's not that good. <laughs> so, he sucks. But he's cheap. Yeah, this is it's a horrible figure. It's like uh, a con artist, actually. You just pick him up for 16 cents. No, no. We got it. better than that. We're better than that. Right. Six range. Double bolts. Already, I like him. Standard combat symbols. He's nothing fancy. He's got good keywords. Based on what you play. So he's got shield, police, and detective. So play him with maybe uh, that question guy, you know. Mm-hmm. He's got he's got two traits. Sorry, he's got one trait and one damage power. His first trait is changing the world. You know, like all those shield people have. Opposing characters adjacent to two or more friendly characters, the shield keyword can't use willpower, the mystic suit ability, which is already pretty great. His damage power, though, is why I like him. And he's got it for his first click and his third click. He can use probability control. Him and adjacent friendly characters that share a keyword with him cannot be the target by an opposing probability control. Ooh. So he basically protects, if you're playing with the theme team, he protects all adjacent characters and himself from opposing characters prop. How many points did you say this guy is? He's six, 60 points. Okay. 60 points. That's who this guy is. So already with, uh, with those, he's rocking stealth top dial, eight movement. 10 attack with energy explosion, and two bolts used to mean something, not so much anymore. He's got a 17 defense with ESD, so if they see through stealth, he's got that covered. And he's got two damage with his special power. What's also great is he's really pushable, so if you don't need to use his special power anymore, say for some reason you want to get rid of prob and prob immunity, you can push him. The only stat that goes down is his defense, and he switches energy explosion for pen blast, and he switches the special damage prob control without wit all while passively giving you the shield team ability. 
All so you go from uh, probability control to outwit. Outwit. Mm. Energy explosion to pen blast if you want to do it. Outwit just got a, bo a boost with the rules changes. Yeah. All right. All right. This guy so... makes me want to go woo. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, yeah, that was just. All right, so so the point of the value coin is we're supposed to guess how how expensive real world dollars are we talking? Yeah, what's the real world price of this guy? If I had to guess, based off what they what you get, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with two fifty. Two fifty. Two dollars and fifty cents. That's too much. That's too much for this guy. He's not. He's, he's, he's got more value for what he brings. More bang for your buck, or even okay. less than a buck, I would say. Amber, what, are, so, what do you think about this figure? So, um, just just based on uh, the keywords and the powers alone, I would say that this, this is a character that likely had shown up in um, Nick Fury and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is an older set, and it is actually before we had that shift where uh, powers like that were would have been seen in, like, a rare or higher. Um, so it sounds more like that would have been, like, a common uncommon, and with it being such an older set on the brink of, like, that was the cutoff of where retirement was, he's actually probably only worth about a dollar, dollar fifty now. Did she nail it? She, no. Even lower. Ooh, this is as low as we can close. go. Wow. Yeah. Getting spicy over here. Yeah. You see, I, I'm i feeling like this is this is the story of a character that nobody realized the potential of. But at the same time, didn't sit in a rarity that anybody paid attention to. But I think Amber's kind of right in the common, uncommon kind of zone. I'm going to guess, and we've already said a buck fifty is too high. I'm gonna go with the rock and price of forty nine cents for this this little value bargain <laughs> bin type character. Ding ding on the nose, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. All right, who, who is this character? This is Jimmy Woo, James <laughs> Woo from <laughs> Nick Fury, Agents of Shield. Yeah, yeah, that is like I just pulled him up. That's pretty solid for sixty points. That's pretty solid. And then you're telling me he's forty nine cents. If you don't, forty nine cents. And you're an active shield player because I don't think anyone ever is an agent of Atlas Shield uh, player. <laughs> you don't play cents. him and Golden Claw and what? Who else? Three D Man. Three hundred point two. There you go. Uh, one day they'll they'll remake those. I'm sure. One day, just like the Brotherhood of Evil, they'll have Mister Nobody, Monster Mala, and Plasmus, whatever. Yeah, there you go. Monster Mala. <laughs> Mr. Mala! Although he, he does Damn. have a detective keyword, too, so... Yes, that's what I'm saying. Detective and... And police. What else? Police. Detective yeah. police. He was he was the B-side to the uh, paranormal investigator. Oh, yep. that makes sense. Mm. Man, that was a solid set. I love that set. Moving, oh, so, set. moving on. All right. Um, that is all that we have as far as segments. So we're, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, Married with Clicks... Go ahead and plug all your stuff, and then we'll get you guys out of here. All right. Uh, well, you want to catch us on Married with uh, Clicks at YouTube.com slash Married with Clicks. It's basically where you can find everything. You can find us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Married with Clicks, where you can get your fan updates. We do have a community group out there on Facebook as well. Uh, I don't have a link directly to that, but I'm sure you can stumble across it if you just search Married with Clicks community group. Uh, we also have a Patreon. If you happen to like our stuff, patreon.com slash Married with Clicks. Uh, if you're already a fan, I mean, you have to help support us. We have a Discord that goes with that. Uh, beyond that, Amber, anything else we need to mention? Twitter? Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, we are on Twitter. Um, it's not as active as our Facebook. Um, but anytime we do have a link to our videos, it does go up on Twitter. We are at Married with Clicks, all one word? Yes. At Married with Clicks, all one word. All right, cool. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you coming on. I hope you had fun. It was a ton yep. of fun. Love being Thank on the show. So All right. Much. Well, see, it was uh, – you guys were on episode 100, and now you're on episode 170. So I think we'll see you in 70 episodes. That was good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Or 30. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, hey, 200. 30. Yeah, we'll get there. 
Calder is <laughs> stepping up production, so it should come sooner than later. So, uh, Seriously, though, appreciate you guys coming on. You're always welcome on, and I wish you guys the best of luck with your YouTube channel. So, listeners, Thank you very much go. For having us. Yeah, no problem. Listeners, go Yeah, listen. go check them out. Go check them They're out. They're amazing. All right. Thanks, guys. All Thank right, you, guys. Good night. All right, Calder. It's down to you and me. And then there were two. And then there were two. Um, we just have some community stuff that we're going to go through real quick. Um, we do have a Twitter, poll, uh, Twitter question, community question that I put up. And uh, Calder went ahead and moved that over to the Facebook as well. So we have some Facebook answers and some uh, Twitter answers to the same question. Community question. Oh, man, I just had it up, and it disappeared. Oh, bad timing. Sad face. Horrible timing. Sad, oh, sad emoji. <laughs> sad brought to you, that, this was brought to you in part by the Emoji Movie. Check it out. And, no. Our, do, I have it pulled up. You want me to read it really quick? Yeah, go for it. Are there any past rules that you wish they wouldn't have gotten rid of? was our community question that we slapped on the Facebook and on the tweeters there. All right. What's your answer to that? Um, personally, I guess I kind of wish they hadn't got rid of the, um, gosh, now I can't think of it. Look at that. Uh, the change to the Avengers team ability. I really liked, cause I run huge teams and I like them not counting toward my action total, especially with the really cool Thor and Iron Man from the what if set that could, Basically, they made a move action, and then they didn't get an action token. So with the Avengers team ability, it also didn't count toward your actions. So they were just moving around the map for zero cost. So I do miss how that used to work. Did you notice how they started reducing all the point costs of all of the characters across the board, right? You're getting characters that are 50 points apiece, especially with, like, Avengers Defenders War set coming out. Or having come out. And then they changed the ability so the, the moves start counting actions again against your action total for the turn. Like, that was yeah. pretty crappy. Now you get Super plus weird. one movement in in exchange, but if you are playing older <laughs> figures where you don't have, you can't fit five of them on a 300-point team, then that extra move could be beneficial. It definitely could. Definitely could. But running just, like, a ton of Avengers, and especially since they made so many lower-point ones, is just really weird that they changed it. So, oh. yeah, go yeah. ahead. Uh, I, I could go through a couple of the Facebook comments. We got a few. We got a little Sam, Samuel Jeffries here. He missed multi-healing with Quake and Steel Energy, which was really cool. I used to do that with Vampire teams a lot, just to get them to die off fast. Because you'd run up Quake, everybody, Steel Energy, heal up from all those different attacks, and that was really wicked cool. We'll just, hey, let's, let's go back and forth. Um, oh, yeah, I'll go back and forth. Uh, so we... <laughs> we should have just had Married with Clicks answer this while they were on here, but um, yeah. Amber didn't tweet an answer. Uh, she said... I'll need to see how it plays out, but I weary of being able to play resources and special objects together. Which, uh, yeah, so not a past rule that she misses, but like, I totally get where she's going with this, where she's she thinks that it might start getting OP, where people are going to run resources and those on the same team and broke. Like, some resources already break characters, but then you give the character the ability to pick up an object in addition to the resource, it'll break even, even further. Like, that yeah. doesn't seem fun to me. Um, let's see. You, you, you had you got one. Yeah, some guy, guy named Hunter Smith. Never heard of him before. To be honest with you, uh, he misses that he got rid of ATAs, and I, I kind of agree too. The whole getting rid of ATAs, not maybe not like a total rule change, but they're just the saying, not going to make any more ATAs. They're gone. They're the past. Whatever. That does kind of suck. Uh, Greg Miller said that the damage depletion modifier. He misses the damage Uh-oh. depletion modifier. And then he also said that Tiny's being able to be carried, like, as an extra. I totally, uh, yeah, I get that, too. I miss that. And, and we got another answer for that, but, like, along the same lines, but this this kind of sucks. I love Ant-Man, so having, like, you're carrying in two characters with a flyer, like, that was great when one of them was Ant-Man, you know what I mean? And it makes perfect yeah. sense, because they're, like, so, they're so small that there's no way that that would add any additional weight, like... Yeah, it made sense, like, Ant-Man and stuff, but then you're, like, Hitmonkey and, like, Howard the Duck or, like, a cat or whatever. It's kind of weird. Like, they're not heavy, I guess. They're just, like, tiny animals. But still, it's a little... When they started getting bigger, quote-unquote bigger with the tiny symbol, it sort of made it a little weird. But I did miss carrying around Ant-Man, because I'm just, like, he's just riding on your shoulder. Like, anybody can walk around with that guy. uh, Uh, So... 
uh, Stefan John Hannon. Uh, multiple free actions when using wildcard TA. And I totally agree. Being able to, like, at the beginning of your turn, pick, uh, let's say, Batman. Okay, let's say, actually, no. Avengers Initiative or whatever. You just copy that, then shoot, and then move somewhere into stealth, and then copy, like, Batman TA or whatever. That was pretty cool, and I do miss multiple free actions using the wildcard TA. So I agree with him. Um, okay, so on Twitter, uh, one of the things that I retweeted was from WizKids. WizKids did a video submission competition thing uh this guy sent one in he's actually the winner of that and i I encourage you to go check out his video he's pretty cool and he tweeted in he said carrying tiny characters doesn't reduce your movement yeah i missed that too because this goes hand in hand with what i just said a minute ago if a character weighs virtually nothing then why would they hinder you at all as far as your movement so i i don't get why they did that but whatevs yeah. Um, Edward K. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Mrs. Duo Attack. Not really that they totally like, just said we're changing it, it's just that they're not going to be really printing it anymore with the way they've been doing duo figures the last couple of times. So, yeah. And I do kind of miss it, too. It was like, I'm going to take a shot, you're going to take a shot. But I see where they're going with duos, I guess. Yeah, I'm okay I, with some of the changes. I actually got someone that said that as well. Oh, um, all right. Crit- Critical Missive said, new duo figs are really just confusing when compared to their older brethren. Everyone's already yeah. said it, but the duo mechanic. Yeah, I. it made sense to be able to attack two, like, two times in a turn. Because mm-hmm. you have two characters on a dial. I don't and like, I, I thought that was cool. I, I don't like when you have to flop back and forth on the click between like that uh, Iron Fist and Power Man. Yeah. And you decide which one you want to use. I don't like that. I want to be able to use both of them. Yeah, exactly. Or throwing out a pog or whatever, like for the Rocket and Groot figure. You know, just like, oh, there, there's Groot, Groot's a pog. Yeah. Or Rocket's a pog for the bigger one. Well, I guess you can still get... Some of those duo figs are still very usable and probably will be. So you just like we're all just going to have to cuz it, it is a past rule now so it still exists you can still yeah. use it as it used to be used if the character has printed duo attack on it so i mean you could still use it but they're just not going to make any more of them and then that sucks yeah you got any more uh we actually got quite a few on facebook uh william k holland misses hypersonic attack multiple paroles with negative one attack for each until you miss and i'm like that must have been a really long time ago oh, maybe yeah. not a really long time ago but that was i was when, not familiar with that, that one. was when hypersonic speed first came out it had three okay mo- like three it was modal you could choose how you wanted to use it and it had like three options that was one of them it was amazing you you like locked your damage value at one whatever it was, and then you just stand there and you just keep rolling and you subtract it's consecutive, so you just or, um, that's not the word I meant it adds on top of each other so the first attack was a normal attack if you hit, you roll your next attack but at minus one, your next attack is at minus two your next, etc, and your damage just kept stacking and it was supposed to represent like a character who is super fast being able to land like a shit ton of blows all in one turn, and it was fantastic I don't Which know makes why sense, they, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they got rid of cool. that. I think that was so cool. You like couldn't super use it. Flurry. You couldn't use it with the movement that is hypersonic speed. So you couldn't like run and then do these multiple attacks. But you could just stand there and just uh, yeah. And it was cool to see what your like little like streak could get up to. You're like oh man, I've hit six in a row. This is amazing. That this is actually is, would damn pretty hard, cool. But. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, rule three, right? So you're, you'd be down to like an eight attack if you had an 11. That'd be pretty impressive if you just kept hitting them. Yeah. Well, this is actually back before the rule of three existed. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. So you'd be like, and figures back then had like 10 attack. So you'd be like, True. okay, I'm rolling with six attack. It kind of, it kind of sucked. But it was really cool. I, I like the mechanic. Um, yeah. We, we, I've got two different people that said ATAs. Um, the last retro and Jonathan Davis, which he changed his name on Twitter. He's Seth Aaron for real. He's been mentioned before on the podcast. ATAs all uh, the way. They were really fun and made teams more realistic to the character. I could not agree more. I love ATAs. The only thing I didn't like about ATAs, and it's inherent in what an ATA is, it's off the map. And I just yeah. don't like when things are off the map, but it, it had to be because <laughs> it was an ATA. Yeah. 
So I, I, I was okay with it. I liked it. I was okay when it was like printed on the card, but it was really weird when I was like, so who's running? It's like, oh, he is. I'm like, did you print it out? It's like, oh, it's on my phone. I'm like, oh, okay, sure then. I was like really weird. It's like the little piece of paper I got to pay attention to is like that person has it, that person has it. Yeah, it was weird. I, I'm out on Twitter. You keep going from Facebook. Have you got them? Uh, okay. Yeah, we got a, we got a few more actually. It's pretty good. Uh, Hilario Garcia, Hilaria. I don't. I feel so bad. I should know this, but he misses sidestep poison. Uh, which I totally agree. That was a great combo. Uh, David Herberger uh, does not like the loss of super strength and hypersonic speed. He's okay with it, but he's not a huge fan. And, you know, the way you can choose charge with uh, Super Strength, Exploit Blades, or Hypersonic Speed without bonuses, which is kind of cool. Uh, James Peckham, he loves a lot of the rule changes, but he wished Energy Explosion still worked to Pen Blast. And on some level, he's like sort of iffy on the destroying blocking terrain, wishes it wasn't limited to one square. Also, not a big fan of the not being able to carry two figures. But he, he overall is like glad they're super simplifying things. And then, last one, James Martin does not like the fact that they got rid of Sharpshooter and Duo Attack. Um, he likes the fix on the markers and panels, stuff like that, and then kind of misses ATAs. It seemed like the, basically, out of all of those responses, which we really appreciate all those responses, guys. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, like five total rules? Five, maybe six? It's all basically people saying the same thing, so we're, we're not the only one. I will say, though, that I'm... I think I'm okay with them nerfing hypersonic speed with an object because it just, if you're moving that fast, why would you stop to think like, oh, I'm going to grab this dumpster and then smash you with it? I, I don't know. You could probably justify it in your head however you wanted to. I just, I was never a huge fan. And plus, like, there's no, there's no worse feeling when you get alpha striked by a Superman or a Hyperion or whatever who flies halfway across the freaking map with, back then it was an Ultra Heavy, for, well, like, eight damage. And you're like, oh, yeah. man, I just got smoked. This sucks. I don't like that at all. <laughs> I mean, it's fun when you're doing it to other people, but it's not fun when you're getting it done to you. Yeah. All right. Um, so thank you, everybody, for all of the responses on Twitter, on Facebook. We're going to keep throwing out community questions. Keep answering them. We appreciate that. And then that's going to tie into what I'm about to talk to you. When you keep answering that, we're going to start noticing that you keep answering because we're bringing back super fan status. Once upon a time, there was a super fan. We, as Dial H, I never was part of this, but the previous Dial H guys named super fans who like retweet our stuff and answer our questions and basically just be a good fan for us. Like We, we appreciate that. We recognize that. We acknowledge that. And not only are we going to name you, uh, a super fan, which we have not decided on when our date of naming someone is. Probably a couple months from now, maybe three months. We'll name you a super fan, and we'll uh, we'll kick something your way as far as a prize. I've got a few prizes mulling around in my head right now, and don't worry, you're not winning like a million dollars. It's not that great. We're poor, but whoa, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, but... I will slaughter a cow and send you the meat, and you will get. No, I won't do that. That would be actually a pretty sweet prize. <laughs> that would be a sweet prize. Yeah. I'll take some uh, some T-bone steaks, sir, please. <laughs> no, uh, so, yeah, just keep tweeting, keep keep retweeting, keep answering our posts. Let us know. Let yeah. us know if you're interested in being super fan. You want to be named super fan? Let us know. All right, moving on. Let us know. Just, just say, I demand to be the super I fan. Like, okay, fan. you make a compelling argument. Um, and then, in addition to being named super fan, we'll get you onto the podcast. We'll uh, interview you if you're into that, and we'll probably play some Bad Samaritan, get in some other different segments. Moving on, mailbag. Hey, keeps in. Uh, mailbag. We actually have a couple of questions from our man from Japan, Malcolm Rush. Good guy, great guy. So he actually has a couple of questions. A lot of them about the new rules and whatnot. So I'll show you first one. Go down the list here. Uh, what was the biggest surprise in the rules slash powers and abilities for you? They finally fixed regeneration. <laughs> what was that? That's like that's pretty good one. Uh, biggest surprise for me was when they changed mystics. I was like, wow, I had no idea that they would 
take it to penetrating and then make it uncopyable. I thought that was a pretty huge change, it and I was kind nerd. of impressed by it. Huge, yeah, huge I'm nerf okay Mystics. It, I'm not, oh, so am I. I'm but not the type of person just... that played Mystics a lot. I was always the type of person that played other people who played Mystics a lot. So when that got nerfed, I was like, yes, well, that's good for me. I mean, I always played Thunderbolts, and they were just like, yeah, I'll take Mystics. And now it's like, ah, can't copy it anymore. It's not a copyable team ability, which is kind of sad. But that's okay. Uh, so the same question. What was the best and worst part in the rule book and power ability card? Sort of what made it easier to understand slash not easier to understand? When they split... Well, let me see how to put this. Object attacks, when they split that away from just being an attack and you have to make an object attack, which is the exact reason why you can't hypersonic speed and attack somebody with, a, with an item now. I thought that was a little weird because they split it up into two different things and I had to reread all that stuff just to make sure that I knew what was going on. It just seemed a little off to me. But, yeah, sure, that one. I, I'll agree with you on that one. Them splitting it up kind of all over the place is really weird. Plus, uh, attacking walls. I thought that was weird. Mm. Like, yeah. With, God, that was so, like, the block of text for attacking walls and what you can do, what you can do. I thought that was a little bit much. And let's go to number three. Which change went too far and which change didn't go far enough? They didn't do anything to Pulse Wave, so I don't think that they changed that. I don't know how to fix Pulse Wave, but... Uh, there's a little bit of wording different, I think. It's like it's not super different, but it's like you... I don't know, it's something crazy. That, that's my answer it's for like, what they didn't go far yeah, on. What, yeah. what I think that they went too far on was the past rules section. I think that they retired some stuff that they shouldn't have retired, like duo attack, mm. like sharpshooter ability. Yeah. I liked those things. I don't know why they got rid of them. I understand why they got rid of team bases. Sure. I don't understand why they got rid of multi-attack. <laughs> yeah. Like, in the future, I, I expect that they've got to make another Galactus, right? The last one was Galactic Guardians. Here in the next five years, I expect... And no, I'm not counting Zombie Galactus. I'm counting Real Galactus. Oh, uh, poor Zombie Galactus. <laughs> but Real Galactus, and I just... I want my Galactus to have multi-attack. Like, he's Galactus. So what? He doesn't care. He just does whatever he wants. He's Honey Badger, See, man. Yeah, I mean, you already make Zombie Galactus feel sad, because he's like... <laughs> five inches tall or whatever he's like super short compared to the old colossals he already feels insecure about his height to be fair though that is canon accurate the hunger is it uh, yeah the hungrier galactus is the the smaller he gets oh that makes sense then i guess he'd be pretty dang hungry i guess to a point uh, though like i don't think he ever gets so hungry that he's like three inches tall you know <laughs> like that'd be th hilarious there is a point where he stops shrinking he's just Wicked, starving anorexic Galactus. He's just on the ground. He's just like, I just need to eat. <laughs> uh, Silver Surfer hasn't found me anything in years. I, I imagine it would take that much time. Uh, I think they went a little too far on the the wild card. Maybe that's justified. Maybe it isn't. I guess, but I thought wild card was fine before. I never. If, Maybe if it's you're just gonna me. go ahead and nerf Mystics, then why did you also nerf wild card? Nerf wild card. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I guess, I don't really know what they could have done farther on, personally, like what they could have changed even more. I guess, I think they could have, uh, if they were put a little bit more effort into it, they could have made ATA still usable, or in some form, like that idea of them, maybe not them being off the map, but I feel like they could have worked something out to make ATAs work better you with know the new rules. You know what they should have done? You know, with the Civil War set, and actually, multiple. It's more than just a Civil War set. I'm talking about the movie Civil War set. They had all okay. those ad optional traits where you could add five oh, points. Oh, yeah. And then you I'm with Cap. Or it says. Or yeah, Iron exactly. Man. Just do that, but with ATAs. Okay. Yeah, don't, no, that would have been, that would have been Don't make cool. ATAs where you can add it to any figure ever. Just put it on the figures that you want to have the ability to give it to. So... You could still use any of the old Avengers ATAs, but in it they could word it the same. But just slap that additional trait on the like random Avengers over the next few sets that you make. Mm. Okay, yeah, definitely then. 
Uh, let's see, number four. Which change do you not like, but agree it's good for the game? Um, you know, that's... Give me a minute on that one. Uh, okay. Well, then I might as well say... Let's see, I should have thought about these a little bit earlier, too. Uh, I'll go with Super Strength. Uh, being able to... Whatever. Not hypersonic Super Strength anymore. Uh, which is fine, personally. Uh, I like it more for the game. I love Super Strength being able to do knockback now, because it makes sense. Like, you're not always going to be able to find a object to hit him with, so you'll just, you know, you're so strong, you gotta, like... If you punch somebody, they're probably going to be knocked on their butt at the very least, if not, like, you know, through a wall, like that Superman we were talking about earlier. So I know some people definitely don't like that change, you know, how Hypersonic doesn't work with Super Strength anymore, but I think overall it's good for the game. I don't know if I have any one particular example that we haven't already covered over the last few questions. Okay. Because I, like, I deviated right. from the questions, and I think I accidentally answered that question already. Oh, all right. Um, if you could change or fix any of the updates, what would it be? Like, which one would you have tweaked a little bit? Mm, I know what I, I... I would just tweak to go back to the fact that if you are a tiny character, you shouldn't... You shouldn't hinder movement in any way. Sure, I mean, I guess if you just want to make it so you can only carry one character with a character. Sure. Fine, okay, whatever. yeah. But, I mean, come on. Damn, man. It's like, it's like a, not even an inch tall. <laughs> like, why? If I have the Hulk and I want to carry Ant-Man, why, why does that minus one from his speed? Whatever. Yeah, it's just kind of dumb. Uh, I guess I would have changed... We talked about Smoke Cloud, and if you look in the rules, they introduced this new terrain called Obscuring Terrain, and I think that Smoke Cloud, it still just drops oh, hindering dude. terrain markers. I feel like that's the only thing I would have tweaked is made, instead of hindering terrain for Smoke Cloud, it was Obscuring Terrain, the yeah, new terrain they just introduced. I totally forgot about that. You and I, didn't we have that conversation over Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Th that is a... Just... What? That's such a huge oversight. The yep. definition of obscuring terrain is this idea. It's they even mention it like a densely yeah. foggy area, or or it's the darkness. You know, like you can't see. Which is darkness. exactly like, that's what, what I think. Smoke, smoke is. <laughs> <laughs> like, why did you? Uh, make, why is it still hindering terrain? Just change it to obscuring terrain so it doesn't stop movement, but people can exactly. shoot through it. Like it makes God, whatever. That, that's a good one. I'm glad we had that conversation yeah. already, but yes. Yeah. Uh, and then, last question. 1 to 10. What do you score the update, the changes in the update? The changes in the update? So not the yeah, changes all overall? Yeah, all that stuff. Oh, all the changes. All it's, the cha it's change slash update, so it's just like, on a scale of 1 to 10, what do you rate everything, all the new rules and everything in the game? I'll give it a solid, I'll give it a solid 8.5. I think 8. that 5. yeah, most I think most of these changes were great. I think, and I said this before, I don't think that they made the game much more simplistic, but and it was more of like a lateral movement. But a lot of the powers that got changed definitely got changed for the better. Gripes that people have had for years about powers, like regeneration, like support, like I think that they were just generally fixed. So. Overall, walking away from this, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I like it. I think they did a really good idea, a really good thing changing a lot of this stuff. I just think that there are other things that I've like, you shouldn't have changed that, and I would have changed this differently. But it's only a handful of examples. So, yeah, I'll go, I'll go an 8.5. All right, cool. I was going to say, like, 8, too, so we can just both go 8.5 and just call it the same because I kind of basically agree. Right on. Um, he also kind of tacked on add team abilities to his questions, but we pretty much covered quite a few team abilities while we were talking, so I think that all works out. Right on. Thank you, Malcolm, for sending in questions. We'll uh, yep. keep, keep sending in stuff. We'll start answering them more often on the podcast. Let's move on to something I'm just overall generally excited about. For those of you that don't know, there has to be a Podbean account in order for Dial H to exist. Podbean costs $25 a month, which up until recently has been fronted very graciously by, I believe it was Hunter originally, and then I think that Drew overtook it and stuff like that. Now that's been passed on to me. So basically this is out of pocket. So 
what I decided to do is let's start monetizing. We are now on YouTube. Okay, so the videos that are on YouTube should be monetized. So we would appreciate it if you guys would start going and watching those uh, for the simple fact of like helping Dial H. We're not trying to get rich off of anything like this, promise you that. But, you know, to keep the podcast going and stuff like that, uh, we would really appreciate the support. And as far as just playing YouTube videos, that doesn't cost anybody anything. Um, Another thing that I went ahead and did is Dial H is now what's called an Amazon affiliate, which means we kind of get commission off of Amazon sales. So a lot of people purchase stuff off of Amazon. And what I'm going to start doing and Calder's going to start doing is we're going to link products that are associated with hero clicks to the Twitter, to the Facebook. If you guys do want to buy that stuff, or even if you just follow the link to Amazon and then buy other stuff, put stuff in your cart and buy it from there, Dial H will get a percentage of that, which is great for us so we can keep the podcast running. And if we can keep the podcast running and we start actually being profitable, I promise you we're going to pour this back into the podcast. We really want to start getting into, and Calder and I have spoken about this a lot, some kind of, not, not exactly a rewards program, but like a Dial H fan base nation where we can hook you guys up with things like decals, things like maybe t-shirts, stuff like that. That's the end all. So if you if you believe in Dial H, you like listening to us, support us somehow, either through Amazon. Um, if you're not really sure what we're talking about, just go to the Twitter. I, I actually posted something earlier tonight. Um, Anything that you buy off of Amazon using our Amazon affiliate code will kick, kick us a percentage of it. It doesn't cost you any more money. It just gives us a commission off of it. So I think that that's like a really great middle ground. I know a lot of people out there use Amazon a lot to buy a lot of different things. So if you're supporting us at the same time that you're buying the stuff that you would already be buying, that would be fantastic. We would greatly appreciate that. And we can keep this show on the road, keep you guys uh, listening to new content, bringing in more podcasters, bringing in more YouTube um, YouTubers, and bringing in people from vlogs and blogs and all kinds of stuff. So if you're interested in being on the show, hit us up. We appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so that's – I got on monetization. How do you feel about that? Uh, I think it's pretty great. Uh, anything that helps keep the podcast going, and if we do, like you said, start making enough where we actually have more than the necessary amount per month, and start putting it back into the fan base and everybody else. I mean, I think it's I think it's pretty awesome if we can get it rolling. So yeah, help us out. We would really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that will be the end of our episode. We've got uh, a Twitter, so make sure you follow us on Dial H Four Hero Clicks. That is the number four. Follow us on Facebook at Dial H for Hero Clicks. YouTube, Dial H for Hero Clicks. And then uh, just slap a Gmail on the end of that for our uh, email address. Our mailbag. Yeah, for our mailbag. Send us some mail. We we love getting mail from you guys. We love hearing from you. And we, we love it, yeah. With the overall positive just amount that we've gotten from everybody, we're really excited. We really want this to keep going, and we really want to keep making you guys happy, entertained. You got anything else in closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, if you've noticed, we have a new icon, a little new thing we had on our Twitter and our Facebook. Uh, I want to give a shout-out. My friend Justin Cox made it. He doesn't have any web design site, but he did want to throw out a shout-out to his local game shop, Dice to Mice. So if you're ever in Spearfish, South Dakota, go play at Dice to Mice or, you know, hunt me down at my house. Either one's good. Are you going to dox yourself and just give us your address and uh, show up? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. That's probably a bad idea. No. All right. Probably um, a bad idea. Thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate it, and we'll get a new episode to you as fast as we can. Bye. Bye. What? <laughs>